Today I'm going to bake Chain Baker's 100% butter brioche. Mmm, butter. <laughs> Hi, I'm Soon, and I'm a food geek. If you regularly watch my channel, you probably know how much I love butter. So when I watched Charlie's video about making a 100% butter brioche bread, I was ecstatic and honestly surprised because I thought I had pushed the envelope when I made my blueberry swirl brioche bread, which has a tad above 83% butter. An ordinary brioche bread has a four to one uh, flour to butter ratio, whereas what's called a rich man's brioche has a 3 to 2 ratio. Charlie's bread has a 1 to 1 ratio, which I guess makes it a billionaire's brioche. Needing in the same amount of butter as you have flour seems like a fool's errand, but I guess I'm that fool. If Charlie can do it, so can I, right? If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. If you want to see more of this content, please join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. I'll be using my go-to bread flour, Caputo Manitoba Oro, an Italian bread flour made from soft wheat. The butter is from the Danish brand Lurpak, which is recognized worldwide. The amount of fat in the dough is 88%, which is pretty insane, and the amount of sugar is about 13%. I estimate the hydration to be around 60% using my bread calculator. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a member at Patreon. You can also buy some merch or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. This is me baking Chain Baker's 100% butter brioche. First, I start out by flattening 300 grams of cold butter. Then I put it in the fridge until I need it. Then I mix 180 grams of cold eggs with 40 grams of sugar, eight and a half grams of salt, and five grams of instant yeast. And then I mix it until everything has been dissolved. Then I grab 300 grams of bread flour stored in the freezer for a couple of hours. I pour in the egg mixture and mix the dough. And then it's too dry, so I knead it. Once the dough looks good, I grab the flattened butter out of the fridge and add it to the dough. Then I knead it until it's incorporated. And then I slap and fold the shit out of this dough.
After 10 to 12 minutes, I start seeing the first signs of gluten development. The dough is more cohesive and extensible. Once in a while, I clean up the table with a scraper because it can be harder to tell how much butter still leaks out of the dough. See how the main dose tries to pick up the dough off the table? We're looking for this to happen as it's a sign that the gluten is developing. We've worked all of the butter into the dough and the dough is showing significant signs of strength. So I will stop here. It took just around 30 minutes of work to get to this stage. And then a quick temperature check. It should be below 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It's way below, so the dough didn't get too warm while working it. That's great. And then I put the dough in a bowl and put it in the fridge. After 45 minutes, I fold the dough to strengthen it. And then I put it in the fridge again for 45 minutes. Then another strengthening. and then the dough rests in the fridge. About 27 hours later, I divided the dough into three equally sized pieces. I flatten each piece and leave them for 30 minutes to come up to temperature. Then I shape each piece by making a long oval. And I fold in each side and roll up the dough. Then I place the dough rolls in a one kilogram, two pounds pan. And I put cling film over top. And then I put it in my proofer set to 26 degrees Celsius, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. The dough rolls for about three and a half hours. About three hours into the rise, I turned the oven to 160 degrees Celsius, 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Then when the dough has finished proving, I brush it with an egg glaze made from one egg and one teaspoon of milk. Then I put it in the oven and bake it for 50 minutes. And I put it on a wire rack to let it cool off. Let's have a look at the crumb. 
Nah, this bread is for tearing. Oh my god, it's so fluffy. Holy mackerel, that is the craziest bread I've ever baked. Mixing the butter into the dough was pretty nuts, but it was fun to see the dough develop. The finished bread is so fatty that it leaves fat marks when you place it on a cutting board. <laughs> so how's the taste? If you love butter, it's incredible, but you can't eat a lot of it. That's probably a good thing because overeating this bread will make you fat, that's for sure. The texture is very soft and super fluffy, and the crust, oh my god, the crust, it's rich, buttery, and kind of grumbly. Like Charlie says in the written recipe, enjoy your ever so slightly shortened life. Well, this bread might be worth cutting off a few minutes. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.